I owned a bookstore here in Montreal um, on St. Catherine Street and I spoke regularly with this one woman about Dostoevsky and what he thought about God and man's relationship to God. And uh, at some point I decided I should start going to church. I grew up in the church but had left. And uh, I asked her if she knew of a church. I said, you know, I don't know anything about you, but it seems to me like you might know. And so she brought me to this church in town and it turned out she's actually the Presbyterian chaplain at McGill. Um, she wasn't talking to me in that capacity, but it turned out that's who she was. And so she started leading me to this church. Uh, and I sat there for a few months, and then I thought, if I'm going to be here every week, I should preach. Um, not because the ministry was bad or anything, it just sort of seemed like that's what I should do. Uh, so I started talking to people, and conveniently this was located in town, so I could figure out how it worked, and uh, met with John Vissers, who was the principal then. I actually thought that because I'd been away so long, I was probably just like overzealously coming back. And so I didn't say anything about it. And then eventually I talked to someone. I said, look, I, I feel like I should be preaching every week. And it's like not going away, this feeling. So I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do with that. And then I sort of learned the vocabulary, I guess, of calling and what that might mean and how that would work. Um, and the way that the system works, right, is you, if you feel it, you talk to your minister and then the session and they have to decide whether they think it's happening. You have a sort of communal discernment, which then goes to the presbytery to be discerned and then comes here to be discerned. And so it's kind of, there's a lot of levels of that, that you learn over time. Yeah. Uh, the staff is fantastic. Um, they want you to do well and they understand that if you're going into ministry, you're taking a huge leap of faith and they really have a heart for preparing you for what's actually out there. And so there's not a pretense that you go out and there's endless healthy congregations. There's like that, you know, it's really easy to say, well, there's 80% of people in society are unchurched. So all you got to do is reach the 80%. But like, all you got to do is a lot, right? And so here they're aware of that and they're trying to figure out what you're good at, where are you strong, and how are they going to let you go out and accomplish that? Uh, the biggest thing for me, and this is super individualized, um, I'm not a very good learner in that I'm not good at having people tell me, here's how to do this. And Dale recognized that very early on. And I learn a lot better going sort of trial by error and, you know, throw me in the fire and get it done. And Dale knew that, and so he talked to them and worked it out that I could go out there and spend time working at a church plant so I could make stuff up on the fly, I could figure it out. If it didn't work, it didn't work and just gave me the liberty to do that. So I was still doing all my classwork and stuff here, but it was all filtered through a lens of what I was actually doing. Because to filter it through the lens of what I think I'm going to be doing, it's really hard for me anyway to do, because I don't know what the church is, I don't know what the city is. You know? And so I've tried to find a lot of efficiencies, like how can we cut our costs, um, which in my particular case, uh, we have lots of money, it's not really, like, it's not desperate, so I can sit back and sort of figure it out. Uh, but it allows us to then have money for other things and, you know, cut costs on the Internet so that we can do other stuff. Um, Technology is a big one. Like, in the book industry, you really need to be on top of what's happening technologically. The place I owned, I bought from guys who didn't even have a computer in it. So, like, you know, I had to figure out the technological side from the ground up. And I found that in the church that is proving to be super helpful like I got there and they got eight computers none of them run properly they all run different versions of word like nothing works and so you got to streamline and make it efficient and make it work and so I did a lot of that yeah I, I would say it's more like you, you figure out what you're really already good at and then you work like crazy at those two or three things until they become so refined that all your weaknesses don't really matter and then you just find people to fill in those gaps. And so the, the, the premise, it's uh, Dale did this with us, it's from Strength Finder, it's this group, and, and the idea is if you're really good at something, say you're like a nine on 10, and you put a 10 in effort over two years, you multiply it so you get to 90, right? If you're terrible at something, you're like a two, and you do the same amount of effort over two years, you get to 20, which is still terrible, right? And so you just focus on what you can do. And so we do a lot of work here to say, what are you good at? And then how will we translate that into congregational living? And most people have something that's going to work. Okay. 
And then you just got to be humble enough to say, look, I'm not good at this. Like, I don't visit. So I have a visitation team of 12 people that does all the visiting. Like, I visit you if you get hit by a truck. But that's about what it takes for me to visit you at this point. Um, and my so congregation doesn't. Does the doorbell to ring? No. Like, I never do that. And so here they kind of they have the intention of helping you to be willing to do that. Like, a lot of people in a lot of churches, they expect you to do all of it. And you can't and you burn out, and you flail out, and the church is in trouble if it's all up to us. And so instead we say, okay, no, what are you gonna be good at? How are you gonna find the people you need to find? So that you walk out of here saying, okay, I need someone, like I'm, I'm bad at schedules, so I need someone who does that. I am bad at proofreading, so I don't touch the bulletin, I don't care, you know, that kind of stuff. And you just figure it out, and figure out what it is you're gonna need, and then go look for them to help you out when you're there. I didn't grow up Presbyterian, so, when it's all on paper, it's really hard to wrap your head around. And so doing the church plan, I got to work with a task force, which is like a session. And then I had responsibilities to the presbytery. So I could kind of piece together how it all works so that now I'm in a place and I know how it all works. Um, so that I made all kinds of mistakes. But some stuff actually worked, right? And that was exciting and people got jazzed up. And I got good at that negotiation. And so now where I am, we try all kinds of stuff and it works and people aren't that upset. Like the amount of change I've done in nine months where I am, other guys wouldn't do in like five years because they're so hesitant. But having done the Barhaven experience and done the church plant thing, I understand how valuable it is to just keep trying and stuff and it works. And how much forgiveness is in a congregation? Like if you fall, like walking up the steps to the pulpit, nobody cares, right? But when you're there, you feel all tense, right? So you got to learn that. The other thing was that doing that, I was preaching every week. So that, for me, preaching's a huge deal, and I'm pretty good at public speaking. And so that was going to be very important to what I was going to do. And so by doing that system, I could preach every week, get a whole lot better at it, get used to how I was going to do it, what was I going to do. And that, that freed me in a way that if I was doing, say, two sermons a week, or two sermons a semester, wouldn't have helped that much. You want to get, take advantage of the time you have because for me to read a book on preaching now takes a lot of work in the sense of finding time to do it. Um, to read something on theology takes a lot of time. And so do it now while you're here. And don't focus too much on the theology, which I know is like heresy to say, but the reality is you get out there and you just have to do stuff. And you know the theology comes into it, but it's way more about just doing and doing and doing and getting other people to do stuff. And you figure out the theology and the theory as you go, almost. And you have the basic groundworks you have to stick to, of course. But like nobody cares about canonic Christology, right? So you have to keep a level of how important stuff really is while you're in it. Because when you're in it, it looks like, oh man, I don't understand canonic Christology, and I don't know the Greek, and this is all going to be terrible. And then you get out there, and nobody can care less, right? And so you got to balance that out a bit.